on March 30th, 2012. It's pulling your number 7778, day three, a teaser for the second half of our combo episode on preemptive bidding, be it by you, your partner, or those pesky opponents. Now, in the second half of the show, in episode three and four, we dig deep into preemptive bidding, focusing on the ins and outs of suit quality, self sustaining suits, losing trick count, and cover cards. And as always, at Bridge Hands, we spend considerable time bidding and playing Bridge Hands. Now, incidentally, we are making this teaser segment for folks who are not currently signed up for the Bridge Hands Premium or Ultra Membership. Here, we are offering a preview of our entire three hour show. So, if you are a Bridge Hands subscriber, then please go on over, log on to www.bridgehands.com. Scoot over to our polling you 77 and 78 and begin watching the entire part three and part four lessons on our comprehensive show. Well, okay, let's take a peek at some of the dozens of topics and as many bridge hands where we demonstrate the lessons learned on what to do or for the school of hard knocks. We also take a look at the dark side of preemptive bids where it's truth or consequence. Okay, grab a seat, get comfortable and off we go. It's showtime. Now let's take a look at some rebids after responders Ronf calls. Opener, two hearts. Responder, two no trump. Opener, three diamonds to show an ace or king and oh by the way, good suit quality in hearts. Opener, two hearts. Responder, two spades, still forcing bids since new suits by responder are indeed forcing. Opener rebids three spades, showing three card spade support. On our third bidding sequence, after responders two no trump feature asking bid with either no outside ace or king or poor heart honors, opener retreats to rebid three hearts. Opener two diamonds, responder asks bidding two no trump with all three toppers the ace, king, queen, and a six card diamond suit, opener proudly rebids three no trump, promising a fantastic suit. For our more aggressive week two preemptors liking special bidding methods, the OGUS convention provides an alternative mechanism to quantify the strength and suit quality of opener's long trump suit. In the beginning, the opponent stole the trick away from us and we did nothing. Then the opponent stole the contract away from us, and still we did nothing. Finally, the opponents, well, you get the idea. So now let's take a look at the predicament when your opponents jump into the auction with a preemptive bid. When they make a week two bid and you are holding more than an opening hand values, or when you have a minimum opener hand with shortage in the opponent's preempt suit, or when you're in the pass out seat and holding near opening hand, it's probably a good time to start thinking about making a call. But how many points should you figure your partner might hold? Well, a good rule of thumb, as we've mentioned before, is about two tricks. Perhaps a side suit ace and a king on a good day, maybe a couple of kings, maybe a chance to finesse, or perhaps some roughing points. If you have a stronger hand, perhaps partner is limited to a king and a side suit queen or less. Then again, when you're in the pass out seat, with only an opponent preempting so far. Your partner may hold a reasonable hand with more than two tricks. So, when you're sitting in third or fourth seat and partner is a passed hand, go ahead and jump to your major suit game with five losers and a semi-self-sustaining suit or better. Holding an excellent self-sustaining spade suit that can produce six tricks most of the times. Our losers are two hearts, one diamond, and two clubs. We should jump to game assuming partner has a good chance to cover two of our five losers. And with only three losers and a self-sustaining suit, making a major suit game looks like a good chance to earn you your well-deserved bonus points. In the situation where the opponents made a week two, three, or four level preempt, perhaps two on one side and raised to four on the other. And our partner is a passed hand. Again, when we are holding five losing trick count, there is no reason to first double and then bid our suit since passed hand partner will probably not have four cover cards to help propel us to a slam contract. 
Now we'd use the same bidding tactic when the opponent's preempted at the two or three level, jumping to a major suit game with five losers. So after lefties, two spade preempt, and righty raises the preempt to three spades. Here our hearts are self-sustaining and our losers are one in spades, one in diamonds, and three clubs. So with those five losers and anticipating two cover cards from partner, we should bid for hearts. By the way, should partner hold a void in the opponent's suit and two to three cover cards of their own, our partner should probably consider probing slam, as we've seen in polling you number 41 through 52 on our slam bidding. The key to making slams is aces, kings, short side suits, along with good trumps. Bottom line, primary honors, short side suits, call them controls or cover cards. When it comes to making slams, they're all our close friends. So then, with less than five losers and a self-sustaining suit, or nearly so, this time we first double and then bid our major suit game. Again, lefty preempts two spades, and this time righty raises the preempt to three spades. This time we have only three losers, one in spades and two clubs, assuming that we can get to partner's hand to either finesse the diamond king or better yet, partner holds it. So after we double and bid our suit at the game level to show four or less losers after our opponent's preempts, when partner has two plus cover cards, three on a good day, it's high time for partner to explore slam. Going back to our lesson number 28 through number 30, we previously discussed the situation when we double the opponent's opening bid and then bid our own excellent suit with a big hand, typically with 18 or more points, and at least a semi-self-sustaining suit. The bidding might go one spade by the right-hand opponent. We double and partner responds to diamonds, bidding at the lowest level to show around zero to seven high card points. Next, we rebid our big suit with five to six losing trick count. Here's an example hand. Our suit quality in hearts is nine plus with four excellent honors, including the three toppers, and five long to justify a self-sustaining suit. And knowing that we can now immediately begin counting losers, our losers are one spade, two diamonds, and two clubs. But even with five losing trick count, here we have already shown our big hand. So unless partner freely makes a jump response bid, we should not assume that partner has two cover cards in this situation. Perhaps partner does have five to seven points, but then again, partner might truly hold a bust hand. So when our partner in advancing seat has two tricks and or six to seven working points, we should trust the partner to bump up the auction to the three or four level with a reasonable fit or other useful values. For instance, partner may hold tennises behind the preemptor's suit or maybe shortness in their suit, all good stuff. Now, when you as the doubler hold a huge hand with nine tricks and only need one cover from partner, you should push to game contract. So after making a takeout double, followed by a jump bid in your self-sustaining suit, or semi-self-sustaining suit, it is game forcing. Also, your takeout double followed by a Q bid in the opponent's suit is also game forcing, perhaps suggesting a five plus or longer card minor suit. Okay, now let's divert ourselves for a moment, taking a look at the rule of 23, competitive bidding at the three level. Now, competitive auctions can be a double-edged sword. Exciting, yes, yet perplexing on how high to bid, particularly when it comes to the three level. As the classic bridge cliche goes, the odd bidding levels generally belong to the opponents. Now, aside from the law of total tricks and our grocery list of environmental factors to ponder, when our side has 23 or more high card points and no play for three no trump game, or a major suit game, 
The rule of 23 indicates that our side should either compete to win the contract or make a penalty double. Now on a lively bidding scenario where we don't particularly have a fit with our partner and the opponents are bidding all the way up to the three level without them having a big fit, you cannot help but wonder why everyone is bidding so high. It almost makes you want to recheck the back side of your cards to make sure you're not playing 13 cards from another deck. Now partner opens one diamond, right hand opponent overcalls one heart, and we bid two clubs. Now at this point, partner should have 12 points or more, and our five and dime bid promises 10 points or more and five clubs. Okay, that's close enough to 23 points. So unless we have a big fit with partner, in which case our suit honors might not pull their full weight. Otherwise, if we don't have a big fit with partner, it looks like we have half of the points in the game, more than that, and we want to compete. So, the bidding proceeds with our left-hand opponent responding two hearts and our partner making a responsive double at this point, showing four spades. Lacking spade support, the bidding comes around to us, but we hold a nice six-club suit. We can go ahead and rebid three clubs. In the pass-out seat, the auction goes around to right-hand opponent, rebidding three hearts, wanting to vigorously compete in this auction. So when the opponents are bidding at the three level, and we have 23 points, or perhaps a point or so less, but we lack a good fit with partner, then a double by our side is definitely for penalty. Incidentally, if partner opened at the one level, and you bid a new suit at the two level, if the opponent intervenes making a two level call or higher in the so-called sandwich seat, a double by our partner is making a penalty double in this situation as well. On our next hand, hand number 7A, West will be the dealer. West has a 7-2-2-2. Two, two, two. In hearts, king, queen, jack, 10, seven times. Great suit, that is six high and three distribution points. In clubs, too small. Diamonds, too small. And spades, too small. So let's take a look at our suit quality and see if we can use losing trick count. In hearts, king, queen, jack, 10. That's four honors and seven long. Seven four is 11, even more than 10. Definitely a self-sustaining suit, isn't it? So we can take a look at our losing trick count. Well, we have three losers in each of the other suits, two, four, six, and one missing the ace of hearts. That's seven. So no, we certainly wouldn't want to open a seven loser trick count with this type of a configuration. So we'll preempt three hearts over to the north hand. It's a five, three, three, two. In hearts, 987, no good, that's the opponent suit. In clubs, queen 10 five times, a little bit, two small diamonds, and jack third of spades. We don't like jack third suits. No help, we're definitely gonna pass. Over to the east hand, another 5332. Three, three, In diamonds, king, queen five times, touching honors, we like that. Two small spades, jack 98 of clubs. Well, those body cards could be worth something. I don't think we'll count it for much though. And in our partner's heart suit, ace three times. Hmm, we like that. Um, some of you may want to go to four hearts to up the preempt. Some of you may think you might make it if your partner has a couple of diamonds. Possible, but we have three losers in clubs, probably one or more in diamonds, and two losers in spades. You might come in with a four heart bid later if you need to. Okay, to the south hand, it's a six, four, three, zero with no hearts. In spades, ace, king, queen, 10, nine, eight, gorgeous suit. In diamonds, ace, jack, 10, nine, another great suit, chance for repeated finesse there. In clubs, ace, king, three times, terrific. So um, we have a lot of points here. In high card points, nine and another five, 14, and another seven. Well, and that doesn't even count distribution points. This is a rock crusher, a huge hand. How about our losing trick count? Do we have a self-sustained suit? Oh, I think so. Ace, king, queen, 10, nine, eight. That's four honors, six long, and three toppers. Definitely 10 plus. So our losers then, we may have a loser in spades. We may not. In diamonds, um, ace, jack, 10, nine. 
we could be up to two losers. We may get a finesse, but we have to get to partner's hand twice to do a repeated finesse. Could be two losers there, and one loser in clubs. It looks like about three or four. And you recall our lesson where we said if we have five losers, we just go ahead and bid our game, four spades in this case. But with four or less, we do a double and then bid our suit. If our partner has two or three cover cards, shortness, primary honors, good things can happen. So we're going to make a double. A pass now by West, back to our partner in North. Well, they're going to be wiggling in their seat a little bit, aren't they? They don't have a lot of values. They wish they had a four card major, but they don't. So not having four spades, the heart suit has been bid already. Uh, they don't want to bid the spade suit, so with five clubs, Queen 10 five times is the suit to bid. And with less than eight points, they're certainly going to just bump it up to four clubs, no more. Over now to East. Well, um, they've come in the auction. Do you want to bid four hearts? Well, whether you do or you don't, and I think it probably would be prudent with the right vulnerability, South is going to make a four spade call. They double, and then they bid a new suit to say that they have less than five losers. Okay, so after four spades, West passes. North is happy enough to pass. They don't have any extras. And I don't think that East is going to come in at five hearts. So it's four spades is the auction. And of course, West is going to lead their top of their honor sequence. The king of hearts, a heart, heart, and we rough with the eight of spades. Now we see we might have a finesse opportunity in diamonds. Um, in clubs, though, we might be able to get a pitch there. We have... Ace, king, third, opposite, queen, ten, five times. So if the opponents are three, two, happens almost half the time, we might get some pitches on our diamonds. But first we want to pull trump. We have six and three is nine. They have four. Let's go ahead and count their trump. Play the ace. They both follow. There's two. They've got two left. We play the king. They both follow again. Okay, that takes care of the trump. And we're leaving ourselves an entry to the north hand for a repeated finesse if we need to. That would be the jack of spades. Okay, we can go ahead and play our ace of clubs. They both follow. Now this is an eight card suit here, recall. Five in the north, three in the south. They have therefore five. They played once. We play the king. They both follow. Great! That means they were three, two. And we can go with our five of clubs up to the queen. The jack falls. A queen of hearts is played by West, saying, yes, that's my suit. I have nothing else, partner. Encouragement for hearts if they do get in. Now the ten of clubs comes, and we can pitch a diamond. Another club, we pitch another diamond. We play a diamond, and they split honors. When you have king-queen, it's oftentimes, probably most all the time, good to split those honors rather than to let them play to the jack. In this case, where they have ace-jack-10, even if it happened earlier, split those honors. Get in the habit of not letting them get a free trick. They might pitch. You may not ever get that honor. Okay, so we win the ace, the queen of spades, the ten of spades, the nine of spades, and we give them the diamond on the last trick. We made 12 tricks. So it turned out our rock crusher hand there was huge, and we missed our slam. So taking a look at the hand again, was three hearts, pass, might go four hearts. Regardless, it's gonna be a four spade eventually. But the point of this lesson was that after three hearts, we do not bid three spades, which is certainly not forcing, especially in pass out seat. We might be borrowing a king from partner, and we don't wanna bid four spades because we do not have a five loser hand. Remember, we expect two tricks from partner on an average day. So we double and then bid our suit. We double, pass, our partner bids clubs, maybe four hearts over here. We then bid four spades to show that we have less than four. And if our, if our partner has two or three cover cards, we want them to continue bidding. In this case, they don't. We didn't think they did. That jack of spades was huge, wasn't it? As well as what? The queen fifth of clubs. Yeah, they didn't have to fall three, two. This time they did. We had a good day. They certainly could be four, one, a 28% chance. Our goodness forbid, they could be 5-0 with this big distribution, all these hearts over on this side, about a 10% chance. So I think we're happy enough to have found our four spade game. And I think we've learned about when we have five losing trick count, 
We just bit our game when we have four losing trick count or less, self-sustaining suits recall, then yes, we can go ahead and double first and then bet our game. Great, let's go to the next hand. Okay, in our third in the sequence, hand 7B, it's actually the same hands as we had before. Same dealer also. Let's see how this one turns out. Once again, that was three hearts by west. A pass by north. In this case, our east decides to go to four hearts. South. Well, you recall we had this huge hand with a void in hearts, so we plan on doubling first and then bidding our suit. A double. A pass by west. In north, west has little values and decides that they want to pass. Oops. A partnership misunderstanding. South would have bid four spades had they thought that North would think it was a penalty double. Now some of you want to play at the four heart level that it's a cooperative, an optional. Partner do something intelligent. Partner if something goes wrong is sure. No, we don't want to do that to partner. We do want to have partnership agreements though. So in this situation, North you should be probably making a bid. Most people, I think, would say that, or at least it's optional. And with little values, I think we should struggle for a bid. It would have to be five clubs. Hmm, not an easy bid to make, is it? So have your partnership agreements in this auction, is the point. At any rate, they passed, and the auction passed out. So now what? Well, they're defending, and it's up to North to lead. I hope that North and South, you didn't make facial gestures towards each other. We're not allowed to have unauthorized information by gestures, hesitations, mannerisms, or the like. So we'll just play our fourth best club, the three of clubs. The dummy comes down, which is over in the east hand this time. We in South win it with the king, the lowest of our touching honors. We look at the dummy, we make our plan, we try to relax, get a breath of fresh air, don't think about missing the four spades, that's behind us. We can only look forward at this point. Focus. Okay, the king of clubs we've won, we see that our partner has played low, the fourth best. Looks like it's bottom of something, so I'm expecting them to have the queen. But in spades, we see that they have two losers in the dummy in spades, so we can go ahead and play a spade, and we can play the bottom of our sequence in this situation to show our partner the good news that we have the ace, king, queen. Because obviously if there was something above it, then the declare over in west would win it. So we play a queen of spades. Our partner plays low, doesn't seem to have much interest in that suit. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go back to clubs, I suppose. Play the ace of clubs, everybody follows. We play a third club. It's rough. So West only had two clubs. And remember, we think they have seven hearts because they open in three hearts. We're starting to get a pattern on their hand, aren't we? Okay, and our partner plays low and the jack comes out from the dummy. Might as well start playing some trump. Plays the king of hearts. A heart is played from north. We play the ten of spades in the south hand, showing encouragement in that suit. And they already know we have the ace and the king. All right, a diamond comes out. Looks like they're going to try for a repeated diamond finesse. You have the king-queen. If the ace is to the left in the north hand, try that repeated finesse. You have a lot of entries, of course, back to the west hand. But it isn't. We had it in the south hand. So at this point, we might as well go ahead and play our king of spades, play a diamond, let them win that trick. And at this point, there's nothing but hearts left. So north-south, you have five tricks. East-West, that gives you eight tricks. You're down two and doubled. Well, if it's equal vulnerability, you're in good shape because North-South missed their game. Actually, it makes slam, although it's probably not that easy to bid. It depends all on the vulnerability, doesn't it? If it's East-West is vulnerable, that's 200-500. If North-South was not vulnerable, that would be 420 for a major suit game. Actually, 480 with the two over tricks. If east-west was not vulnerable, that would only be 300, 100, 300. North-south missed their game, which would be 480 or 680. So it depends on the vulnerability here, doesn't it? Now, some of you may be contract rubber bridge players. Fine. The same general theory applies. If you can get a game, that helps to propel you to your 500 or 700 rubber. So although duplicate players score differently, for each hand played, the concept really works. 
If you were to win the first game in a series in Contract Rubber Bridge, then you're already halfway to your rubber, your 700 rubber. And the chances for the opponents to get the next two games is what? Not one and two, it's one and four. So it's worth quite a few points, regardless of the form of scoring. And thanks for dropping by. We hope you enjoyed taking a peek at the second half of our continuing lesson on preemptive bidding. Yes, lest the truth be known, there are many twists and turns to consider before making an indiscriminate preemptive call. Of course, it all begins with sound, handy valuation, then knowing the subtleties of suit quality, losing trick count, cover cards, when you use them, especially with week two bidding, will definitely improve your bidding accuracy. Then there's a situation when the opponents dare to make a week two or three level preempt themselves. Now, how dare they? On the other hand, knowing how to cope when they make a preempt makes earning a game contract all the sweeter. So if you would like to see the entire show for the second half of our Pulling You 7778 Combo issue on preempts, please join either our Premium or Ultra Bridge Hands membership and tune in for over three hours alone on Intermediate Plus level concepts of Week 2 Bidding. And be sure to check out the entire first half of this episode for another three hours and over a hundred hours of bridge hands lessons on a wide range of topics such as hand evaluation, bidding, and play. So until our next show, many thanks for tuning in to our bridge hands pulling you video and happy bridge trails to you until we meet again. Bye now.